Welcome up, folks! I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, Blackest Heart, and Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. You can see the books over there. We're not going to be doing book reviews. We're not going to be doing writing advice. We're going to be doing another classic rock album rankings video. This time, we're going to be doing the band U2. Gotta be honest with you, this is not one of the bands that I collected as a youngster. In fact, I was real late to the party with U2. I mean, I'd heard them on the radio. I liked their music well enough. I thought a lot of their songs were catchy and admirable. I mean, I didn't turn off the radio when their songs started playing. I liked them. Just wasn't buying their records. Now, I started dating this girl back in 2004, 2005, 2006. She was a huge U2 fan, and she bought us really, really expensive tickets to go see the U2 uh, Vertigo tour that came rolling through Salt Lake City into the Delta Center. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, she's paying, the, she's paying the ticket price. I don't care. I'll go to a free concert. U2 ain't that bad. Whatever. Holy shit. That concert. Oh, my gosh. I was watching that going, man, these guys are a rockin' band. These guys are tight. Their music is solid. These guys are playing a flawless, flawless show. Every single guy in the band was just on point, and the vocals were amazing. I was a U2 fan. Halfway through that show, I'm like, I gotta get every one of this, the albums these dudes have put out, because they are fucking killing it. These Irish guys are killing it. In fact, other than the Guns N' Roses show I saw in 1991 or two, that was the best show I ever saw. U2 seriously put on the second best rock concert I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of rock concerts. I've seen a lot of bands. And U2, man, they hit a home run. They sold me right there. I was a fan right there. I went out and got all their albums. And now we're going to rank them. i got to be straight up with you. Some of their albums suck handful. A few of them suck. Everything else is pretty solid. So let's get to the rankings, all right? Let's talk about the sucky ones. We're going to we're going to go down this list from the ones I don't like to the ones that I think are fantastic. But this one is crap. Zuropa 1993. And let's just say every video I do, we say a prayer for the death of rock and roll that grunge brought along Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Creed, all those crappy bands killed Rock and Roll Dead. And you can tell that they influenced U2 also because U2 had a great sound going into the early 90s and then grunge came along and killed Rock and Roll, changed the music industry for the worse in every conceivable way, including U2, and they, U2 didn't need to change. You know, grunge didn't uh, didn't affect you too, but they just they were they were, they were freaked out like everybody else. You know, they were fr as freaked out as all the hair metal bands, and so they changed their sound, came up with Zoo Ropa in 1993. Yikes! Oh, hella lame. Some techno garbage bullshit and boring bullshit. Not on top of that. Yeah, it was, it was a nice try. Yeah, try something new, whatever. Nice try, but it didn't work. You know. Again, thanks to grunge, they fucked everything up, including you too. You know, the only song on there, on here, that was okay was Far Away Too Close. Maybe the Johnny Cash, the one they collaborated with Johnny Crash. Yeah, no, fuck it. It's awful. Awful. Another awful, awful album is Pop. It's 1997. They're still recovering from grunge, right? So they're still putting out shit albums. This was actually their lowest selling, selling album of all time, you know. Like I said, when you try to change for the... And when you try to fit in, you know, U2 had a killer sound, right? Grunge came along, every, freaked the whole music industry out. All bands decided to change their sound. They didn't need to. They just needed to stick with who they were. Whenever you try to fit with the fad, you're just going to fail. Lowest ranking selling... Lowest ranking album, lowest selling album... More, more techno bullshit, more boring crap. 
Um, Staring at the Sun was an okay song. Uh, Gone was an admirable pseudo-rock song. I mean, everything else was crap. I mean, I actively loathe these two albums. Because I don't like seeing bands change their tune just to fit with the fad. Especially when the fad is garbage, like grunge was. Hey, if you've been watching my album ranking videos, you know I hate grunge. Let's talk about, let's get to some of their, okay, so October. You know what? I didn't care for this one too much either. This is one of their earlier albums. In fact, this is the second album they put out. Uh, 1981. Uh, you know, it's just so-so. Gloria, the song, eh. I Fall Down. Um, you know, that's quite good. It's got a, uh, you know, a, mel a melodic kind of a groove to it. Uh, Tomorrow. It's got some nice... Tomorrow starts off with some nice Irish bagpipe things, you know. It's, it's kind of good. Actually, I like that one. Uh, the piano intro to the song October is good. You know, I'm giving this a little bit uh, of a bad rap when it really doesn't deserve it. But it still ranks kind of low on my list. Stranger in a Strange Land. Scarlet is very haunting. Uh, this is kind of a mashup of sci-fi lyrics and religion. Uh, you know... The, you know, the band thought that this was an awkwardly posed cover. And I think it's all right. I think it's all right. That's, decent. That's a decent album. I'm not bagging on that one, you know. It's just not one of my favorites. No Lines on the Horizon. Let's go there as my 11th ranked one. It's their 12th overall that they put out, put out in 2009. Uh, you know, uh, No Lines on the Horizon, the title song is all right. Uh, a Moment of Surrender. Uh... Kind of got this, kind of got this low groovy beat that reminded me under low, underlying the song that reminded reminded me of uh, Sade, uh, if you know who she is. Um, I'll go crazy if I don't go crazy tonight. That's kind of an upbeat song. The lyrics, oh, there's the lyrics that caught my attention on uh, one of the songs was, uh, "Every beauty needs to go out with an idiot." Yeah, every beauty needs to go out with an idiot. We've all been there. We've either been the idiot that the beautiful girl was going out with, or we've seen a beautiful girl that was going out with a straight fucking idiot. I don't know why that lyric, lyric caught my attention. My 10th tenth, tenth ranked album, All That You Can't Leave Behind, came out in uh, 2000. It's also their, it's not, it's my 10th ranked album, it's also their, also their 10th studio album. Uh, it came out right after Zuropa. Yeah. When they realized Zoo Oprah and Pop were not getting them there anywhere, they decided to go back to their original sound, which is refreshing. Yes, applaud them for that. Applaud them for that. A Beautiful Day, that's a great song. Back to the old U2 sound. Stuck in a Moment You Can't Get Out Of, another great song. Elevation, In a Little While. It's got a good bluesy rock feel to it. Uh, Wild Honey. Very Beatlesque, very Beatlesque. Liked it. Uh, Peace on Earth, a good ballad. When I look at the world, very nice. You know, you know, they get back to their original sound, and they're a pretty good band. You know, these are good albums. Pretty much now, we're talking about albums that I like, that I listen to a lot. Just ranking them now. Uh, Songs of Innocence, 2014. It's their thirteenth studio album, so a recent one. Oh man, if you. Uh, we're going to get into some of the other albums here that sold like 25 million copies in their heyday. You know, because of digital music and streaming music, album sales fall off. They are just dead. For instance, when, when U2 was a, a big band in their heyday, 25 million copies sold, 10 million copies sold, 15 million copies sold. This one sold about 200,000 copies. Because of streaming music. It's, it's the decline. You can see the decline of the album set, which I think I, I consider the album an art form in and of itself. It's a shame that streaming music and digital music, uh, you know, in your, in your iPods and whatever, have just ki you've killed the album. Killed it. I blame, I blame you, streaming music fan. Anyway, every breaking wave raised by wolves, Cedarwood, you know, these are good songs. 
Cedarwood Road, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for you know, album sales, if, it, if they were still uh, living off of album sales, they'd be dead. They'd be broke. It's the concerts. It's these freaking amazing concerts that they, they do that they just hundreds of millions of dollars in tickets sold in concerts. Good for them. Good for those guys. Good for capitalism. Unforgettable Fire, 1984. It's their fourth album they ever did. Pride in the Name of Love. It's my third favorite U2 song. I remember, I actually remember as a teenager, a young, young junior high school guy listening to that on MTV and really liking it. I loved the Irish sound of it. I loved Bono's Irish sort of, I mean, I could just tell that that's where they were from, from listening to that song. Unforgettable Fire is okay. Bad is good. Milk is very haunting. Um, this, I love this cover. It's my favorite U2 cover with the castle. I looked it up. I Wikipedia'd this thing. It's Mull Moidrum, Moidrum Castle, smack in the center of Ireland. Built in the 1700s, and then 1921, the IRA destroyed it. You know, the I, 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 Irish Liberation Army. Is that what it was called? IRA? I, 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 R A. Irish Resistance. I don't know what it was. I don't know what the IRA was. But they were, they were terrorists, and they destroyed this castle. Um, another interesting fact about this photo is it's plagiarized. You too snatched this out of a castle book that some guy put together and didn't give him credit for it. They, they actually got sued and they gave him a settlement. Don't do that. Don't do that, you two. Rattle and hum. Rattle and hum. 1988. It's my sixth, uh, their sixth album, my seventh favorite uh, it's kind of a sort of got some live music and some studio stuff. They should have just left the live music out of it. Uh, some of the live songs are Helter Skelter. I thought Motley Crue covered Helter Skelter way better. Uh, you know, they got Ben Demon's Land, which got, uh, they got a weird interview. It's, it's full of weird interviews. Um, Desire, that's a good song. Hawk Moon, probably the, probably the centerpiece of the album. Uh, it's very Springsteen-esque. Should have been a hit. Hawk Moon by U2. Should have been a hit because of very, very Bruce Springsteen feel. So does Silver and Gold Angel and Angel of Harlem. Uh, God Part 2, All I Want Is You. Should have been a hit. There's a lot of stuff on here that should have been a hit. I don't know why they weren't. Let's talk about Boy. Their very, very first album, 1980. Bono, Edge, Larry, and Adam burst onto the scene with a very, very solid first album. I Will Follow. That's the first song on it, I Will Follow. And, my, and then that sets the tone for everything that they did previous, after, not previous, after. Now, sometimes I can't remember. If you've watched my videos, you know that I don't script anything. It's low budget. I don't edit. It's all just me bumbling around. Bear with me. I Will Follow sets the tone for all the U2 songs to follow. It's got, the, I mean, the guitar riffs, the beat, etc. Really sets the tone. Twilight is a great song. Got a groovy bass riff to that. Um, tracks three and four, I remember uh, there's a nice transition between tracks three and four. Uh, I think it's Cat Doob and uh, Into the Heart. Um, let's go on to my fifth favorite U2 album, which is their most recent album, which is called Songs of Experience. It's their 14th studio album put out in 2017, and it is their most recent one. Hey, if they, if they had put this thing out in the late 80s, it would have had 10 hits on it. 10 top 10 hits. Lights of Home, You're the Best Thing About Me, Get Out of Your Own Way, Summer of Love, hit. Red Flag Day, hit. The Showman, hit. I mean, this is a cohesive album. I liked every song on it. Like I said, had it been released 
1986. It would have been huge. My fourth favorite YouTube album, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb, put out in 2004. Yeah, this was the this was the uh, album they were promoting when I at the concert I went to the Vertigo tour. Vertigo is a great rock song, great rock song. Uh, Miracle Drug uh, sounds like old U2 again. You know they're back in their groove. Sometimes you can't make it on your own. Love and peace or else that's a rocking song. City of Blinding Light, all because of you. Could have been a should have been a bigger hit. A Man and a Woman. These are great songs. How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. 2004, back when they were in their groove. My third favorite U2 album, War. It's also their third one that they ever put out. 1983, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. Yeah, that's a big sounding song right there. Big sounding, big bass. Big drums. Seconds. That's a powerful and groovy song, Seconds. New Year's Day, the breakthrough single. New Year's Day. Hey, it matches my shirt. I just noticed that. I'm easily entertained. The Drowning Man. My single favorite U2 song of all time. Heavy, melodic, different. Favorite U2 song of all time. Drowning Man. YouTube it, and you and it will be your favorite one too. Surrender, that's gold. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's catch, catchy. I agree, I catchy. Forty. The song is just called Forty. Oh man, that's one of my favorite songs because that was the final song of the um, Vertigo tour concert. It was Forty. It just played out melodically and just. Uh, oh, oh, I loved it. Loved it. I think your number, my number two, is going to surprise a lot of you because I imagine you're thinking it's going to be my number one, but it's not. Joshua Tree, my number two favorite YouTube, YouTube, no, YouTube album. Joshua Tree, it's their fifth album ever, came out in 1987. Now, every band has this one album that is just Every song on it is solid. And this is U2. U2's. U2 put out two albums like this where everything is iconic, everything is solid. Not a weak song on the album. This is a much harder album that they'd, that they'd ever done before. It's, and it's not about Europe's problems. It's not about Irish problems. This is about America. Joshua Tree. Where the streets have no name. Oh my gosh, the bagpipe, the pipes, the organs, the guitars, the build-up. That song in concert gets you off your feet clapping to the beat like no other song ever by any rock band. The streets have no name. Great intro, great build-up. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. It's got a groovy bass to it. With or Without You, ah, iconic song. Bullet the Blue Sky, one of their better tunes, especially live. It's a rockin' jam. Badass vocals, bass heavy hit. Running to Stand Still, it's a great ballad. The Red Hill Mining Town, great song. In God's Country, great song. Trip Through Your Eyes, catchy, One Tree Hill. Every song on this album, solid gold. Great, great, great. And this is iconic. This is a, the Joshua Tree is iconic. I have the collector's edition here with all the uh, outtakes and extra features and director's cut interviews. My number one YouTube. God, I keep calling him YouTube. I'll edit that out. I swear to God I will. My number one U2 album of all time, Octung Baby. Octung Baby came out in 1991. Their seventh album ever. And their second most popular, my favorite. And like Joshua Tree, every song on this 
is a solid, solid entry. You know, Zoo Station, it's a good opening. Even better than the real thing, One. It's a great, great, great song, one of my favorites. Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses? I, again, I've got the a collector's edition of this, and they've got a second version of that. They call it their Temple Bar version of Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses. It's better than the single that they put out. Uh, Soak Roll beat, uh, you know, piano, lyrics, uh, Mysterious Ways as a hit. Ultraviolet, great. Acrobat, Love is Blindness, very deep beats. You know, like I said, like the Joshua Tree album, this album, and I, I give I give this about this this is my favorite one. It's probably the one I listen to a little bit more than Joshua Tree, but Joshua Tree and this one could almost tie for number one. But we'll give this one number one. Octoon Baby. So that's my review and ranking of all the U2 albums for this classic rock album ranking video on YouTube. We did U2 on YouTube, or as I've been mistakenly calling it, YouTube on YouTube. Anyway, that's it. Enjoy. Hope you liked it. Go out and get all of the albums.